All right, we are on chapter three, section six, and we're going to talk about the three-dimensional shape of covalent compounds. So covalent compounds, you know, up until now, we've, we've kind of been talking in two dimensions and like everything flat on the paper when we draw Lewis structure. And so say here's CH4, right? We show everything on the paper and it looks like everything has a 90 degree angle, but it's not really true. Um, atoms inside of compounds, right, have these bonds. And when we talk about the bonds, what are the bonds really? They're pairs of shared electrons, right? And so you have to think about electrons. You have four groups of electrons around this central carbon. Electrons all have the same charge. They're all negative. So if you've ever taken a magnet with a north and south pole, and you put the two poles together, you can feel them pushing against each other. They don't want to get close to one another. And the same thing is true about electron pairs. They don't wanna get close to one another. And so what they're gonna do is they're gonna arrange themselves so that they are as far apart from each other as possible. And so they'll take up all the three dimensional space in order to make that happen. And so if you have an atom with four shared pairs of electrons or four bonds, what you'll get is something that looks like, we call it a tetrahedral. Tetra is four, right? So it's four groups around that central carbon. And so now you kind of have one hydrogen atom that's sticking out the back of the screen. You have one hydrogen atom kind of coming forward at you, right? And then another hydrogen atom kind of to the side and then one going straight up. And so no matter how you rotate this molecule, um, all the bonds are 109.5 degrees from each other. So it doesn't matter which bond angle you are looking at, they are all 109.5 degrees. And it's all because electrons are the same charge and they repel each other. They, they don't wanna be anywhere near each other. It's like you and your siblings, right? You don't wanna get anywhere close to them. It's the same thing. So electrons are like, it's like siblings. So this is, this is a really nice drawing, <laughs> but you don't always have time to really draw in three dimensions. And so a lot of times what you, your book will do is that it will show this three dimensions um, where if, you, if you're in the plane of the paper, it'll just like these two would be in the same plane, okay? but you have to show a hydrogen going behind the screen and you have to show a hydrogen coming out in front. And so we do that with a dashed lines, lots of dashed lines that's saying it's going behind the plane and then this solid wedge, it's coming out at you. And so you're gonna see diagrams in your book and in the notes and things like that in both ways. And so we call this repulsion, right? Um, we call it something fancy, valent shell electron pair repulsion model. And it's just talking about the electrons that are bonding, those are valence electrons. And so that's fine. We know what a valence electron is, right? An electron in the outermost energy level or outermost shell. So valence shell. And we know that bonds are electron pairs. And you also have some pairs of electrons that are non-bonding, and we're gonna talk about those. And that they repel each other. And it's a three-dimensional model. So it all kind of makes sense. And you'll see it abbreviated just by the first letters, V, S, E, P, R. And we kind of shorthand say VESPER, okay? But it's all about electrons moving away from each other. So sometimes you're gonna hear it called the three-dimensional shape. Sometimes you'll hear it called the geometry, the molecular geometry of a molecule, right? And in order to do that, right, if you have a formula that's CH4, the first thing that you have to figure out is what is the central atom, right? It was kind of easy because it was given to you here. You were told which one is the central atom, but a lot of times they just give you the formula and then you have to figure it out. And so we did a lot of that when we did um, Lewis dot structure. You can determine what the central atom is. Then you're gonna have to determine what's the number of basically electron dense areas around the atom. And so we said, right, 
CH4 ends up looking like this. And so this gives us four areas, or E areas of, we call it electron density, right? Four areas of electron density. Now, if I had carbon and I had this, this is, this is carbon dioxide. If I had carbon dioxide, um, and I want to know how many areas of electron density. I actually only have two areas of electron density, right? And the reason I only have two is because a double bond will count as only one area because the electrons are kind of shared in that small space because they're shared between the two atoms. They kind of stick around in that in-between space. So we have one, two areas of electron density. Um, and then you have to look at clouds from lone pairs of electrons. So for example, when we draw oxygen, we know oxygen is bound to two hydrogens, but it also has two lone pairs of electrons. So this bond is one, two. These are our bonding areas. So here's two areas of electron density. And those are bonding. But we also have, I'll do it kind of a different color, um, one, two areas of electron density. These are still electron density, but they're non-bonding. See, non-bonding clouds. And non-bonding clouds are only held by one atom instead of two. And so because they're only held by one atom, they actually take up more space and they push on the other bonds inside the molecule. And I'm gonna show you what that means in terms of shape here. Okay, so here's for example, um, what we've already talked about, we've already talked about um, something with four areas of electron density and they're all bonds. So this example was CH4, right? Now, what if we took one of these areas of electron density and we converted it from a bond to a lone pair. So if you were to look at NH3 and we were to draw the Lewis structure, you would see that it was bonded to three hydrogens and it had one lone pair on that nitrogen. Well, this lone pair here takes up more space than this bonded pair here in our CH4. So this is NH3. So because this lone pair takes up more space, all of the bonds down here got kind of squeezed down. And so our bond angle went down. Now we are, we went from being all of our angles being 109.5 to now being less than 109.5. If you took away another bonding pair of electrons and converted it to a lone pair, so now we have two lone pairs and two bonds. So this example is water. Um, what you'll see is that they get pushed down even more. So this really should be like less than, less than 109.5. This is like 10, 104, right? It gets even smaller every time you, you convert from a bonding pair to a non-bonding or a lone pair. Now, what happens when you go from four areas of electron density to a total of three areas of electron density. Um, so this is C. So what we're gonna see is that now they're all bonding, right? And they all wanna repel each other. So they're gonna get as far away from each other as possible. And now there's only three things around that central carbon. Now you have, oh, some more room to breathe. You have 120 degrees between all of the bonds. So we call that the bond angle, right? Now, what if you only have two areas, right? Because here's a double bond. Here's, this is our carbon dioxide, CO2, right? So what we're gonna see is that now, wow, we have lots of room to get away from each other and we're at 180 degrees. So if you just remember that the electrons are trying to get as far away from each other as possible, um, you can do that. All right, so here's, here's our example of carbon. We are gonna talk about carbon so much this year, um, this semester. So 
carbon wants to complete its octet. In order to complete its octet, it needs to make four bonds. It can make four single bonds. If it does that, let's count our areas of electron, let me see, electron density, right? So our number areas of electron density. So here we have one, two, three, four. So I have four areas of electron density. That tells me I'm gonna be tetrahedral. Okay, and so one of the things you do have to know is our, our names of our structures. So if you have four areas of electron density, you're gonna be tetrahedral. If you take away those lone pairs one at a time, you go from tetrahedral to pyramidal to bent. Okay, so these are all kind of under the same thing because we have four areas of electron density. But now when we convert to having one, two, three areas of electron density, we convert from being tetrahedral to being trigonal planar. Okay. And if we take away another area of electron density, and there could, you could do this two ways, you could have two double bonds or a single bond and a double bond, but either way you have two areas of electron density that tells you that your molecule is now going to be linear. So the difference between tetrahedral, trigonal planar, and linear is that we go from four bonded areas, tetrahedral is four bonded areas, EAS areas, to three bonded areas, to two bonded areas. The, the other conversion here, when we're going from tetrahedral to pyramidal to bent, is when we, we are converting bond, a bonded pair to a lone pair. So just kind of be careful about that. All right. So when we talked about those non-bonded pairs of electrons, they take up more space, right? But we don't really see them so much. But those non-bonded pairs force those bonded pairs closer together because they're just taking up more room. It's like, you know, your, your, maybe your roommate taking up more, more than their fair share and squeezing you into a corner of your dorm room, right? So those non-bonded pairs are forcing those bonded pairs closer together. And the bonded electrons have to stay between the two atoms. They have to. They can't move away. So because they're kind of restricted and the lone pairs are not, those lone pairs can just spread out and make themselves comfortable, right? But those non-bonded are really stuck. So those are the ones that get, that get closer together. You have a presence of non-bonded electrons. So if you take a look at what this kind of looks like, here we're going from right? One, two, three areas of bonded electron density and one area of non-bonded. So we have one area non-bonded and we have three areas of bonded. So how do we know what this is? Well, if you go back to your table real quick, yeah, go back. So we have, what was it? I forgot. <laughs> three bonded, one non-bonded. So three bonded, one non-bonded is right here, is right here. And so that is pyramidal. So if we go back, it is pyramidal. And indeed that is what is labeled, right? So you could draw it really nicely and you could be a great artist and I'm not. And this is more like what I would draw where you have the dashed lines going out behind the screen and you have the wedge coming out from the screen. Now what happens when you convert one of these non-bonded pairs to a lone pair? Well, here's our other lone pair, that's one, two, and they take up lots of room, and so then they push these together. So we went from having about 107 degrees between each of our bonds to 104.5. So we see that our bond angle decreased when we went from two areas of non-bonded and two areas of bonded. So we went up in our areas of non-bonded and down in our areas of bonded. And so that changes the molecular shape. And the molecular shape is really, really important for how things behave, right? And 
what we've talked about so far are really, really simple molecules, but we're going to talk later about molecules that have long chains of carbons, right? Um, and so because there are going to be multiple carbons, you're not always going to have one central atom. So what you do is you pick what's your atom of interest, and then you can find out the molecular shape around the atom. So let's look at our first carbon atom. Here's our first carbon atom right here. If I want to know how many areas are around that first carbon atom, I go one, two, three, four, and they're all bonded. That tells me it is tetrahedral. So just around that carbon is tetrahedral. So I'm going to go on to my second carbon. Here's my second carbon right here. My second carbon, I want to know around it. I have one, two, three, four bonded areas. That tells me that that carbon is also tetrahedral. Well, now if I go to my oxygen, here's my oxygen. I count around my oxygen. One, two bonded, and one, two lone pairs, that is bent. And then you don't, you wouldn't do it for the hydrogen because the hydrogen is only bonded to one thing. So you don't ever do that, but you're going to do that for the atoms that are, um, that all have other atoms surrounding it. Okay. All right. So let's switch gears and let's go and solve some problems. All right. So here are our problems. We are getting our covalent compounds into shape. So for the molecule shown, indicate whether the orange colored atoms are in front of, behind, or in the plane of this book or the screen, right? Okay, so remember our dashed lines tell us what? Our dashed lines tell us this is going behind and our solid is telling us that it is going in front of the screen, of the book, whatever it is you're looking at, right? So it doesn't matter what orientation it is. If it's a solid triangle, this is going in front. And if it is dashed, it is going behind, okay? All right, now for the molecules in 3.45, determine the shape around the central atom. So I'm doing this one right here. Now the shape around the central atom. So I'm gonna erase my circles just so that I can do this. Remember that dash line and that wedge, those all mean single bonds. So I'm gonna look at my carbon and I'm gonna say I have one, two, three, four single bonds. So this is four bonded areas of electron density. You have to know that four areas, four bonded areas of electron density will give you a tetrahedral, T-T-T-T-R-A, tetrahedral shape, right? I don't think we had to give the bond angles. I think we just had to say the shape. All right, um, but 109.5, right, it's tetrahedral. All right, next, we have, we'll do that in class. Okay, here, determine the shape around the orange colored atom or atoms in the following Lewis structure. All right, so the first one that we have to do is this nitrogen right here. So we have a nitrogen. So I'm gonna count what is around that nitrogen. One, two, three bonded areas. So three bonded and one, make it come big, one non-bonded. So what you have to remember is that that is pyramidal. So that's for the nitrogen, right? Now, we're gonna do the same thing, but now we're gonna do it for the carbon. Okay, so for carbon, I have one, two, three, four areas. So that tells me that I, I'm gonna put four areas, four, uh, not just areas, but bonded areas. And that tells me that I have something that is tetrahedral, okay? And I think that's it for the problems, yep, for this section. That's it, quick and easy.